Disagreements are a part of life. But one of the things that is really significant between an emotionally intelligent and a non-emotionally intelligent person is the pattern that they exhibit during a disagreement. So let me explore with you. First, the emotionally intelligent individual is capable of quickly recognizing when a disagreement begins their emotional response. They physically can recognize quickly its manifestation and begin a series of questions. First is, what am I feeling? Then what emotion is that attached to? And finally, why do I get triggered to that emotional state? That quick recognition allows them to then deploy a strategy. The strategy they deploy, whether it's deep breathing, whether it's simply just acknowledgement, then allows them to temper the emotional state so they don't become hijacked. Tempering that state allows them to continue to think logically. When they think logically, the emotionally intelligent person deploys three very key strategies in emotional intelligence. One, they dial up empathy. They start asking questions to help to understand the other person's perspective. Two, they dial up flexibility. While listening to that perspective, they remain flexible in their own beliefs and thoughts. Third, they leverage the relationship. I have a relationship with this person that I'm disagreeing with. We know each other well, which means if I'm demonstrating empathy and flexibility, then we can work together in solving the problem. Now, the non-emotionally intelligent individual cannot and does not acknowledge the physical manifestation that changes in them once a disagreement starts. So they're unaware of the simmering of an emotional reaction. Because they're unaware of it, their emotional uh, response escalates. As it continues to escalate, they look for behaviors in the other individual that will confirm their beliefs. When they are looking for those confirmations, they continue to argue, they continue to present their own ideas, they continue to not listen to the other person's ideas or interpret the other person's ideas as being an attack on their own. And what ends up happening is their emotional state escalates, they're incapable of thinking logically. And so they're incapable of entering into an empathetic response, of being flexible with their own ideas, of actually leveraging the relationship that they have with this individual which could potentially be a strong foundation of trust and they're incapable of entering into problem solving. So this is why it's so important for a number of reasons to engage in emotional training development, whether you are an individual contributor, even more so if you're part of a team and definitely if you are a leader.